uh, six minutes after 10 o'clock. That beautiful music is not new Segway music that we're using here. It is a beautiful piece of music uh, being performed by Byron Janice. Byron is on the phone. He has such a legacy of music and, and accomplishments that we're going to talk about right now. Um, I, if I read you his, his credentials, uh, we wouldn't have any time for the conversation. But let me just tell you this. Uh, he's legendary, okay? He made his orchestral debut at the age of 15 with Toscanini's NBC Symphony Orchestra at the age of 18, became the youngest artist ever signed to a contract by RCA Victor Records. At the age of 20, made his Carnegie Hall debut. He performed for four sitting presidents at the White House. There was one who was standing, but we don't count him. Uh, he was <laughs> honored as a musician, a diplomat, and an inspiration by the United States Senate and the United States Congress. He has com he composed the score for The Hunchback of Notre Dame and The True Gen and is currently writing music for stage and screen. He just doesn't stop. I, I wanted to see these that were sent to me. It was live from Leningrad, 1960. Holy mackerel. Uh, Byron Janis, you must be friends with uh, uh, who, who's the guy I always say? Um, Oh, my gosh. Josh Groban? Ki no, Kissinger. Oh. Kissinger. Oh, Henry Kissinger. You must be friends with Kissinger. <laughs> you, you and him apparently have no, you just don't age. Good morning, sir. How are you? <laughs> well, you're right. I, I am 90. <laughs> I will be. Uh, where, where are you? Where, where are you calling from? New York. New York. Wow. And, and is, that, is that home for you? Yes, it is, it is home, yes. See, I, wanna... I was born in Pittsburgh. Oh, oh, in Pittsburgh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, the, the the music that I, I just picked out, I wanted to tell you something, that I was listening this morning to some of your pieces, trying to pick which one to play, and I know later on uh, one of your people asked us if we play something else, and I do have that ready also, but I just fell in love with that piece, I, and uh, can you tell me about it? It was David's uh, Song of David, I think, right? Uh, yes, yeah, David Starr. Okay, David Starr, that's right, I'm sorry, yes. David Starr, uh, something. Uh, well, that's, that's a piece I, I wrote some years ago, and my son, Stefan, wrote the lyrics. And I, we tragically lost him last February. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but he died a trip in Europe, and it was very difficult and sad. And yeah, I bet, yeah. Yeah, but he... Uh, he wrote the lyrics and, and they're they're very good, I think. <clears throat> and it's it's an Israel, it's a song for Israel, I guess you might say. Okay. And and did you um w when you perform it now, since he wrote lyrics, does somebody sing it? Uh, yes, I've had it. Yes, it's been sung several times. Okay. With so so how do you know with, with all, so much music in your head? How do you know which songs are part of your your concerts? Do, is it all laid out in advance, or do you just kind of say, "Oh, I know what'll go good next"? Uh, well, no. You, I think it's, encores. That's, that's, they're usually encores. Oh, okay. So at the encores, that's when you kind of can pick and choose. Yeah, so you just at the moment, or whatever I feel like. I, I imagine there's all encores. Do, do, are you more comfortable on a stage or in the studio, or does it not matter? Stage or studio? Yeah. Studio for, for, for what? For playing, you mean? Yeah, like when you're recording music in a studio, is that as, um, uh -huh. as exciting for you as playing on a stage before a live audience? No, it isn't. I prefer playing for a live audience. You know, here in the studio you have a red light and when it goes on and you start, it's not very... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not exactly... It's not, it doesn't have the right feeling. People do. Are you, uh, are you currently going on tour or are you releasing a new album or, or what, what's new? I'm going... No, I'm... I'm uh, no, I'm, I'm not on tour. I've, this album has just come out. Leningrad. And do you know the story of that? Or? No, not at all. So this is this this is a, a show you did in 1960. <laughs> yes, it was. It was a, I opened the culture exchange between the United States and Soviet Union. It was the first formal exchange, and uh, so I um, I played. Two, two what? 
two recitals. I played, sorry, two recitals, uh-huh. which were the opening. <laughs> I slipped my mind on one. Which were the opening, and one was in, one was Moscow, and the second one was Leningrad. Uh-huh. Both of them were considered open openers of the exchange from American point of view. The Russians sent Shadis up Russia here as one of their Did, really good. Is is the music that we consider classical music in America the same music that they would consider classical music in Russia? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, yeah. so so we don't we don't play favorites. We don't say, well, this guy's from our country, so we're going to celebrate this composer more than somebody else. Well, no, but what I did was I wanted to bring an American work with me to play on the program. And, you know, uh, and I brought the sonata of Aaron Copeland, who's one of our leading composers. Oh, right, right, yeah. And, uh, that's what I did. And uh, we, we were told that your audience at first was um, sort of hostile towards you. Why? Well, that was Moscow. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And Moscow, uh, because you remember we had a U 2 spy plane. Uh, playing it, perhaps you know, but was shot down by the Russians. And Eisenhower said, that, you know, uh, it can never be shot down, it flies too high. Da, 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 da. But they managed to shoot it down. And that was about six months before I went, hmm. and six months before the opening. And there was great hostility. Uh, I did not hear any applause when I walked out on the stage. Oh, no. I, I heard you too, you too, shouts of that. It was called a U2 plan. Oh, no. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. <laughs> it wasn't easy. It was funny. They, it's funny how we do that to people from the country, even though the person who... who we're talking to or, uh, or reacting to, I had nothing to do with it. Do you know the University of Florida, not too far from where we are, ha- just celebrated their 90th anniversary of having a music program. And, uh. and here's, uh, and uh, you mentioned Aaron Copeland, and he had, uh, pr- I guess, visited the school several times mm-hmm. to help out with the education of the, the students up there. Is, uh, that's pretty awesome. Oh yes, that's that's wonderful. He was he was really a wonderful man, and it was very American, very very American. I don't want to tell, pardon me. I I don't want to be presumptuous, but I want to ask you what music was like when you were a child. I mean, how did music make its way to you? Was there somebody playing a piano in your home, or or how did mu- how did you hear music when you were a child? Well. I, we did have a, a small piano, and I have a sister who was three years older than I was, and she was taking some normal piano lessons, which was normal at the time for a lot of young people to take piano lessons. And she was doing that, and I, I used to listen from upstairs, and I would shout, <laughs> I would shout, wrong note. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> off as quick as I could <laughs> to the bathroom and lock the door. <laughs> uh, so, so that was but, it? I mean, like when I was a kid, you know, I'm 63, so I'm a little bit younger, but I, I mean, radio was the way I heard music. Um, yeah. did, I'm guessing that was also true for you, or am I wrong about that? No, uh, well, radio, radio and recording. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, but how this actually happened was uh, I was in pre-kindergarten at the time, and uh teacher asked us to bring our favorite Christmas gifts to school with us. I, I was given a xylophone by one of my uncles, and I, you know, and I brought it to school, and I, and I started to play on it. And then when the teacher was playing the piano for children to dance around, I sort of picked out the exact same tune on my xylophone, and they were kind of amazed and said, "Can you do that on the piano?" I said, "I don't know," and so they. <laughs> picked me up <laughs> and put me on a piano bench and, oh, wow. uh, and I did. I succeeded in, in playing the same theme, which was so that I had quite a good ear. Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that that's considered natural talent. And and, and, yes. and for who, the, the adults around you who must have uh, nurtured that t- natural talent are to be thanked too as well. Who do you thank for that? You said your uncle gave you the xylophone. Yeah. Well, that was all, and then, and then um, 
the teacher came to my home. Oh, wow. And said to my parents, apparently, you know, he has a great ear, he'll sing if you saw him perhaps playing an instrument, perhaps the piano's the best. So, so my mother said, all right, I will. So that's how I started. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like I, 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 I was taught nothing before that, of course. But it was a totally natural wow. thing for me to do, yeah. I, I was surprised how I, how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have an interesting story about the Live from Leningrad 1960 CD, yes. the, the music on there. I, yes, I, 1960, the reason it's come out now was because I hadn't known that they were recording my recital. <laughs> oh, wow. I, yeah, I had known it and I was a little surprised <laughs> to use that word uh, when I heard that they had and it was brought to me by a man who does a lot of recording with me in New York an engineer he said have you seen this and he gave me this CD which said uh, opening concert cultural exchange and Byron Janus piano 1960 and it was apparently only sold in the Soviet Union and that was that. But when I found out, I was, you know, it was not easy to say, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, wow. How, how do I know how it went? Well, I put it on our gramophone uh, record player, and uh -huh. uh, I thought, well, you know, this isn't too bad. <laughs> so I think I'll, 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 rec I'll use it as a recording. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing that the recording survived so long uh, and, and was in such good in good quality in order for you to do it Did, was there any digital uh, repairs done to it so that well, no yes there were yes there were we had uh, uh, coughing uh, people coughing and all of that you know oh okay okay and, and, so, but musically of course I, I couldn't touch anything because it's, that's the way it was and anyway and it's and it was um, uh, really uh, I want to Okay, I think I have, um, because the CD that was sent to me, I don't have a way to play it in the studio, but I think I found it online. So I'm going to play a little bit of it. I think this is from the Live from Leningrad uh, CD. If not, please forgive me for that. But I, 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 let's see if this is it here, if I, uh, if I do this right. I want to make sure I play, push the right button. <laughs> all, right, okay. uh, all right, here we go. This, this should be right here. Is that it? Leningrad, yes. Okay. An Encore. Oh, that's Encore. Oh, wow. But it's listed on the corner. This no, one. No, it wasn't Encore, actually. It was on the program. Wow, it is so it is so clear. I mean, the sound quality is amazing, yeah. considering that well, that yeah. ta tape was sitting around for so many so many years. Um, do you um, have anybody in today, a young piano player today, that you think is going to uh, carry on the tradition of that type of music. Well, yes, I did. I did some teaching. Uh, I do some teaching, and uh, and in New York at that time there was a boy from Russell's who came to play for me, and um, he was good. And I said, you know, yes, I'd like to work with you. But he said, so he kept coming in from Brussels. <laughs> oh wow! How did he yeah. find you? I, I don't know, but he heard me. He heard recordings of mine. Uh huh. Uh huh. And he's he's won, won all kinds of things, and he's played a lot, a lot of. He's a very talented boy, and I think he's going to have a big career, which is very difficult to make today, you know, because. There are so many pianists, so many, and so many, many, many. But there, there are good, excellent pianists, you know. But the great pianists, there are always very few. When when you uh, um, released, uh, when when you were contemplating the release of the CD, you needed a cover. Yeah. Oh. Yes. My, my wife Maria, Maria Cooper Janis. <laughs> she. She's actually the daughter of Gary Cooper. That's and, amazing. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, she, yes, we were back in Europe in uh, 1965 or something. And uh, we got married in 66. And um, she is really a very, very talented artist. And she did the cover. 
And the, and you can see it's a, it's an, it's sort of an abstract piano, if you can see that. I'm, I'm looking at it, and I see that. Yeah, wow. See that? I didn't yeah. see it until you said it, but I do see it. Oh, okay. wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> and inside the same thing. <clears throat> and um, uh, so that's, that was the story of that. PJ Live on tour. I did, one, I, I released a recording before that one, which, which is... Uh, it's called BJ Live on Tour. BJ Live on Tour. <laughs> I like that. That's a more, that's a more modern name. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and that's the one with, I, I found that one on Amazon, actually. So that, that one is available yeah. on, on Amazon. But I, I didn't find Live from Leningrad for sale anywhere online. Is Or did I just miss it somehow? It just about now. Oh, just really now. Just came out. Okay. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can one can go to my you know my website on it. Uh, I found your website, I think. Yes, yeah, so we have byronjanis dot com. Yes, that's fine. But what? if you go if you go further, I think if you do that, and you'll see that on the record. Uh, oh, I see it. I see it. Yes. Oh, I can play it there. Oh, I I found it. Okay. So if I let me click one of these, let's see what it sounds like. If I click one. Oh, I see. It's gonna play. Here it is. Wow, and that's from uh, the website. Okay, so your website actually has uh, a way to buy the CD and also to listen before you buy it. Quite, quite right, it does. Okay, well, yeah. that's pretty remarkable. Can, can you, could you imagine when you were a younger musician that you could ever communicate with music this way, so instantly with the, with the computer? You'd never, we never would have thought this, right? Oh, I mean, the computer's such an amazing, really, it's amazing. I mean, you can find out anybody's you know biography of just about anybody how long does it take you to learn a song i'm just curious <laughs> to, learn, to learn a piece of music yeah 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 well you know some of them are 20 minutes some of them are five minutes wow minutes. wow so, that's amazing so, you know, friends, actually. I, I i learned pretty quickly you know i've been challenged in my life with 10 problems when I was 11, I put my hand through a glass door. Oh. And in removing it, it was just horrible. It was cut, my little finger was terribly cut, and bleeding all over the place. So I was sent to the hospital, and they did operated on that finger. And they, they uh, what's the word, they uh, broke the tendon. Right, okay. And, and the nerve in the finger. and. I have had that finger numb, totally numb, today as well. Oh. My whole career was a thing, and the doctor would say, you know, you'll never play again, but uh, you're, so, you're so young, and there are so many things. And I just didn't listen. Well, and good so, for you, yeah. So one day I wanted, I wanted to tell a lot of people and young people also, you know, don't give up too soon. So, so the pinky. I love that. So the pinky is numb to this day. To this day. And you can, but you use it on the piano, right? Even though it's numb. Yeah, I use it, but I, you know, I first I had to look at it and see where it would land for quite a for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I got used. To, I sat. For, I looked. Uh, I, I look at the piano differently. I mean, from uh, Have anyway. You? Have you and yeah. your wife ever tried to switch hats? Have you ever tried to paint and have her try to play piano? <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> uh, do you ever step out of your comfort zone and get out of character a, a little bit and just like play jazz or, or rock and roll on the piano just for fun? Uh, rock and roll, no, but jazz, yes. Mm -hmm. And only record... Of, uh, on tour, there's I, you know the name Cy Coleman. Oh, he, he wrote a lot of first class musicals. We went, I, I went to school with him. He's a great friend and Broadway, Broadway shows. He's written, I, I can't think of them, but there are many of them. And um, we were together here and we were fooling around at two pianos and so forth. 
He said, hey, Brian, why don't we do a, rec- a recording or whatever of something we can make of with this Paganini theme, which is a famous theme. And we took that and we made variations of it. <laughs> and it's pretty jazzy. Oh, oh how fun. Oh, how wow. fun. Wow. That is so it, great. It's fun. Yeah, it's. <laughs> so that was fun. And people seem to really like it, which pleases me. <laughs> Uh, well, you, you're a joy to talk to. So, uh, is any are there any live performances uh, coming up, or are you pretty much retired from that? Uh, what I'm doing now is a lot of benefit performances oh, okay. for for the ben- for the veterans. Uh, I went to Washington at the Walter Reed Hospital. Oh wow. Uh, it's it's <laughs> when you see when you go there you realize that uh, war is a pretty horrible thing. Yeah, yeah. But I played for these fellows and I said to them, "What is the thing that is helping the most in your in your uh, getting better?" And they said, "Music." I said, "What really? Music?" And I tell you, wow. you know, we knew this song ago, artists, people felt it. You know. But what happened was that, um, uh, uh, wait a minute, let me just say. So, this has finally, finally been proven by science. There's a big article on it about how music does something to the brain. Really? After thinking After. Making. The act of making music, and I tell you what, what people have done, and I told them they, they can do this, they can play terribly badly, or any instrument actually, they don't have to play well at all, but it's that act of you and the instrument, for some reason, it does affect the brain, and the brain becomes a healer in, in the body. It's, so that's what they're doing now, I was very excited to hear that. It's an honor to have you on our show, Byron Janice. Uh, I think I hear your wife in the background. That's right. And thank her, thank her also uh, for, it's an honor to meet both of you. Um, I, thank I just meant one thing. Yes, sir. Uh, Go ahead. Which, I, uh, which is that I play a lot of benefits for the Arthritis Foundation. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, how wonderful. I got arthritis in hands in 1973, and I played for something like 15 years without telling anybody. <laughs> You oh my gosh, so you just do it incognito and that's absolutely generous of you, sir. What a blessing you are. Robin, Robin and I come to New York quite often, so uh, hopefully you will uh, answer the phone when we ask if we can just say hi. We would love, would love, would love to meet you. I, 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 I can bring you some pastries. Do you, do you like pastries? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, Go to go to the website Byron Janis B Y R O N J A N I S dot com, and you'll hear this beautiful music that I'm using to uh, take us out of this segment. Uh, Byron, thank you, and thank you to Mrs. Janis, and uh, hopefully we get to meet you one day soon. Well, I hope so. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. You know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information. Yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and... 